I don't know if you heard, but uh, inflation is down. And so our worries are over. Inflation <laughs> fell 3%, fell below 3%. For the first time in years, reports the New York Times, annual inflation cooled more than expected last month to 2.9%, according to a consumer price index reported uh, report pardon me, released today. It was the first time that the inflation gauge had dropped below 3% since 2021. On a practical level, there's no meaningful distinction between 2.9% and 3%, our economics reporter Ben Castleman told me. It's the difference between your $6 latte costing $6.17 next year or $6.18 next year. But the larger decline in inflation is absolutely significant. So that's what they mean by 3%. It means that prices are growing by 3% or now less than 3%. So 1% of $6 is $0.06, cents, and so 3% of that is $0.18. Cents. That's where they're getting that math from. Just two years ago, prices were rising at more than 9% per year, and prominent economists were arguing that it would take a recession to bring inflation under control. Now inflation is basically back to its historic range, albeit still above where the Fed would like, Ben said. That's a pretty remarkable turnaround. Most economists now see a recession-free soft landing as the likeliest scenario, Ben said, but the economy still faces potential hazards. The unemployment rate is low, but it has risen steadily and many people are falling behind on their credit card bills. Those factors, along with cooling inflation, have put the Federal Reserve firmly on track to cut interest rates at its meeting next month so this is another bit of gaslighting the fact that inflation has slowed under three percent just means that prices are going up from where they already are at a slower rate than they did last year but the starting point is already a very high price because we had the huge inflation bounce and nobody is believing that things are getting more affordable they're just becoming less affordable at a slower rate than they were in previous yeah. Years And you know who makes this point uh, in a minute is J.D. Vance. But first, I want to go to Joe Biden taking a victory lap on this, unburdened by the task of getting reelected. Here he is uh, answering a reporter on this. Yes. I'm not going to answer your question. I was talking to them first, okay? the audience first. Okay? Shut the fuck yes, up. Sir. Shut the fuck up. I'm a lame duck president. I get to talk to you how I want now. So sh shut up. I'm taking, I'm taking the question I want. Yes, sir. Um, thank you so much. Thank you, Press. Thank you, President. Thank you, Press. Thank you, President. 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 Uh, but here's J.D. Vance on his new Internet talk show, Between Two Trucks, uh, giving some <laughs> perspective uh, to this claim that, that inflation. <laughs> oh, that's great. <laughs> that inflation uh, has slowed down. Hold on. Let me get the video here. Uh, there it is. Perfect. Sir. <laughs> New York Times, uh, I wanted to ask you about the latest economic news from this morning with inflation now being under 3 uh, percent, the lowest rate since uh, mid-2021. What is your sort of reaction to that news? Well, I think you, the crowd reaction says it all. Look, when they say that inflation is down, they mean from a baseline where groceries are already 30 percent more expensive than they were when Donald Trump was president. And they're not saying it's coming down. They're just saying it's not going up as fast as it was three years ago. That is not a reputation or a record to brag on. That's a record to be ashamed of. Why did it take them so long to get inflation to where it is? And why are prices so high? It's because Kamala Harris failed to do her job. There we go. All right. So that's his point. And look, don't take it from a mean, couch-fucking, hillbilly Republican. Uh, take it from black voters in Philadelphia if you want. Simon Atiba tweets out, a black woman in Philadelphia devastated by inflation breaks down and blames the Biden-Harris administration, saying that inflation is killing us without killing us. Does inflation hit you? 
It, it hit me hard. It's hitting me hard. What do you blame for it? I blame the federal government at this point. If a working class mom who works as a paralegal cannot buy a $2 bell pepper because it's now five, imagine a mother living on food stamps. Mm. Imagine a mother who's making minimum wage trying to feed children. Mm. They're killing us without killing us. If you, if you understand that. They're killing us without telling us they're killing us. They're hurting people in ways that they can't help themselves. It's either feed my child or, or how about feed my children and I don't. But I have to go work. There you have it. Not only that, I'm down to eating ramen. Social Security benefits aren't keeping up with inflation. This dated August 14th. Current. Even after... Biden boasts of lowered inflation rates. Until last year, Janet Albrecht could afford to eat roast beef sandwiches or tuna salad for lunch. But the widowed 78-year-old now has to skimp on her meals because her Social Security benefits haven't kept up with the rising costs for food, housing, and health care in recent years. A retired graphic designer, Albrecht estimates she's paying $100 more a month at the supermarket than she was before inflation started skyrocketing. And don't forget, $100 more a month, that's for a single widowed woman. You know, I, I got we got five people in the house now. We're spending a hell of a lot more than $100 extra dollars per month. I mean, it is four or five. It's basically $100 per person per month. Yeah. Um, her landlord increased the monthly rent by a total of $65 over the past two years. Her utility bills are larger, and some of the seven medications she takes daily after suffering a heart attack have gotten more expensive. She hasn't had a haircut in more than a year, though she doesn't like to wear her hair so long. I'm down to eating ramen for lunch, which I never ate in my life until recently, said Albrecht, an Indiana, Pennsylvania resident who relies primarily on $1,163 in monthly Social Security payments. If it's not marked down, I just don't eat it. I haven't eaten beef since I don't know when. I can't afford it. Many other senior citizens are also feeling the inflation squeeze. Social Security benefits have lost 20% of their buying power since 2010, according to a recent analysis by the Senior Citizens League, an advocacy group. Those who retired that year would need a boost of $370 a month, or $4,440 a year on average to regain the lost value. Put another way, every $100 a household spent in 2010 would only purchase $80 today. Mm -hmm. Social Security benefits have risen by 58% between 2010 and 2024, but the cost of goods and services purchased by typical retirees jumped 73% during that time, the league said. The prices of bread and ground beef, for instance, have shot up nearly 147% and 73% respectively over that period. And this is the part that I think goes unsaid all too often, is that where people are feeling inflation worst is where it's highest, which is food and groceries, yeah. necessities, things that people cannot do without. I mean, I just did a shopping for the house Yesterday, just little things, man. A box of those Thomas's corn muffin cakes, whatever the fuck they are. Basically, a bunch of cornmeal. A box half full of cornmeal, half full of air. Five dollars and twenty nine cents. Like, where the fuck you get this from? Paper towels. Yeah. Like those used to be ninety nine cents, by the way. Yeah, no, everything. For, it's for, like it's insane. Yeah. It's it's just absolutely insane when you think about like when I think about you know ten years ago, it's like another world. When I think about five years ago, it it's like another world. Um, you know, McDonald's, like these fast food companies have started bringing back their meal deals to bring people back because a, a Whopper meal at Burger King, $14. Subway. I once ran into a Subway because I was in a rush and I just wanted something. I haven't been to a Subway in years. You know, they used to have $5 footlongs at Subway. Footlong yeah. sandwich at Subway now with uh, chips and a drink is like $13, $14. It's, yeah, it's yeah, unbelievable. Yeah. And the gaslighting just... It can't work. And and this is what is so amazing to me is that this is the most winnable election for Trump. And he can't seem to stay focused on this message. Look at that. You heard it from J.D. Vance. You heard it from black voters in Philadelphia. You heard it from this old woman trying to live on Social Security. It's unlivable. And now here you got 
Biden coming out and touting his record as if this is some victory, you're talking about a lower rate of price increase on top of an already hyperinflated market. Um, and so I, I just don't know how this narrative holds uh, that uh, Biden has conquered inflation. It's just preposterous on its face in ways that everybody can feel. Everybody shops for food. Everybody has to eat. Listen, Corn Pop, I told you to be a soft landing. There's a soft landing, Mr. White. <laughs> sure, exactly. All right. That's the word. You, soft just because landing. you have to pay five twenty nine for your Jiffy Corn corn Muffins now, <laughs> you know, you got to cry about it. Forget about it. Listen, if this is what's happening to the people who are retiring today, right now, what is it going to be like 10, 20 years for us down the road? I mean, it's going right. to be awful. Right. And, you know, the, the, the sad part about it is, too, is we as we talk about that bell pepper, that lady, was talking about that bell pepper too now that you have to pay five dollars for probably is filled with pesticides and all those other things yep. i mean the whole quality of our food has went down and you're right every single time you even go to fast food now the five dollar foot long is gone right you could spend twenty dollars a person at mcdonald's now i mean yes. when is this going to end and i mean it gets back to us talking about you know hey instead of spreading our empire everywhere around the world instead of importing food in and this is something that's kind of crazy that over the last four years or since after COVID, uh, the, the Republican, the populist right has gotten more of a grasp on growing their own food, making, you know, building their own resources. We need right. to do that as a nation. We have yes. to start bringing it home. We have so much land in this country that we can be, you know, growing our own food, keeping it real cheap, you know, uh, and be healthier food. So, I mean, when you look at this, and let's be honest, too, uh, sticking to the story, Keaton, we know this came out now because it's election time and right. they got to make the Democrats look good. I think there was an article or some report the other day that was saying that all the advertisement that's going for uh, Kamala Harris, it's obvious that the advertisers are favoring the Democratic Party that are putting those up on Google and all those those places that seem to be more Democratic establishment friendly. So they're releasing this report now to try to help them with the election coming up. And that's why they're saying it's a soft landing. But I don't think it's going to work because I think people realize. And But I think the big question for Donald Trump is, and I've been saying this since this interview the other day, what's your economic plan? Right. The, the one time I really did appreciate Donald Trump for what he did when he tried is when he put tariffs on certain manufacturing uh, products in China to try and bring that manufacturing home. You know, like it wasn't just overall... Uh, you know, it was specific things, I think, in, in, in the marine world, the boating world or 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 whatnot. But he, he failed to do so because the Chinese said, we could just wait you out. We don't care. You're going to be gone. We'll wait for the next guy to come in. But that's what we need. We need somebody to think about how do we get some industry back home? How do we start making things again? How do we start fixing our things? I think the short term solution is starting growing your own garden if you can. And I understand that's probably hard for most people to do, especially most people in this in this position, but you know, we have to come up with solutions like that. Uh, and until we do that, until we actually act upon that, I think that this particular avenue we're going down, when you see these people, when you're talking about their social security benefits, everything they have to pay and where it hits most, you're right. It hits most in the grocery store. You can't get out of there without spending a hundred bucks. Oh, yeah. I mean, it, this is going to continue to get worse until we find a real solution to change things and praising your God, Donald Trump is not going to change things unless we have, a serious solution moving forward. And that's what I always talk about when it comes to him and the economy. Like, what did he really change? What changed in the economy when Donald Trump became president? Everybody was still working for an app. You know, <laughs> the right. homeless number was still growing. The military budget was still increasing every year. You know, what, I mean? what really changed? Well, this is what this is why I think he's having a problem, um, because they never came up with. Look, they, they didn't put forward a convincing economic program in 2022. That's part of why there was no red wave, because a lot of voters just voted on Roe v. Wade because the Republicans were screaming about inflation and people were very angry about inflation. But they didn't put it. They didn't say anything that they were going to do. They, they, they didn't put forward any real plan uh, to bring it under control. And, you know, people are aware enough to know that Republican economic policy is almost always tax cuts for corporations. And yeah. uh, how is that going to bring down prices? Corporate profits are at an all-time high. Corporate profits are almost double what they were in 2012. And that's profits. That's not revenue. That's not revenue. So don't tell me that profit is adjusted for inflation. Uh, we're talking about pro we're talking about a net 
profit. We're talking about dollars over expenditures, right? And so inflation factors into that a little bit in terms of the cost of energy and things like that. I'm not saying that's not a factor, but there is obvious price gouging going on. A how you can take a trip to the supermarket and not realize that they're fucking you on these products is just unbelievable. Three paper towel rolls, $8.99 for the store brand paper towels. I mean, it's just, it's the most obvious fucking thing in the world. Don't tell me that has nothing to do with inflation. You, you can't tell me that, especially when corporate profits are at an all-time high. Yeah. And when you talk about these corporate profits, I just want to mention that during Donald Trump, whenever people, I was on Jason Burmis' show on TNT radio the other day, and he was even kind of touting the fact that, well, I hope these tax cuts stay, you know, uh, if Donald Trump gets back in the office, they continue to go through. When they had those tech, uh, when he had those tax cuts, we had that particular year record buybacks, stock buybacks by the companies and the CEOs themselves to enrich right. themselves. It was only broken last year with Joe right. Biden's, you know, uh, presidency. I mean, it doesn't make a difference. Democrat or Republican, the rich continue to get, continue to get rich and the poor stay poor. And I don't see anything changing. And you did mention it. And I'm glad you're mentioning this and talking about this. People need to talk about this. What is your economic plan, Donald Trump? It's got to be something more than drill, baby, drill. How are we going to get out of this? And if you as a Trump supporter out there, and I've seen a couple of them on the chat over there. I'm voting for Trump. He's the lesser of two evils. And I do think he is the lesser of two evils. I still think that, you know, when it comes to our speech, the Democrats are fascists as can be. And they are the most dangerous, you know, a party on the planet right now at this time. Look what they just did with, Demala, uh, with Kamala Harris. You know, they coronated her. She, she hasn't won one delegate anywhere in any election, not even in California in 2020, when she dropped out a week or two weeks before the election. But the mail-in ballots were already mailed out, so they already had a chance to vote for her. And she still won no delegates. Right. I mean, it's just uh, it, we're in some serious bad times, and I don't know how we're going to get out of it. But what I sense and I see down the road is maybe a war with China, and we could have more manufacturing of weapons over here, of American dollars, of American weapons right. made right here. And maybe that's the financial plan to get us out of this slump. I mean, because we, we are in it bad. I mean, what are we going to do moving forward? Like I said, we don't make anything here in this country. We don't fix anything anymore. What are we going to just continue to work for apps and be a service-based economy? So now that's the big thing. I'm not going to tax tips, which is not even the argument, which is not even the discussion. The discussion is what should the restaurant owner be allowed to do with the, the waiter's tips? Because that's what's happening right now. They're taking those tips and they're distributing it throughout their, all the employees throughout the restaurant so they don't have to pay them as much. They're paying right. them with your tips. And that's the that's the big argument in the question right now. But they get away from it. We're like, we're not going to tax your tips. Like, come on, let's have a, a real conversation and discussion for once, please. Well, Kamala is making her economic policy address tomorrow, and uh, apparently she's going to uh, pitch some anti anti price gouging measure, which the impl the 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 implementation of that uh, is always dicey. Obviously, when you talk about like price controls and things, but. Um, it's something, and I say this as a pundit, like if Trump is not careful, she will eat his lunch again, just like she did on the no tax tips. Like, like he's got to get off of the she's Indian, not black and start getting on inflation. <laughs> and it, like, in, like you have to start getting on message quick because she's going to, and the momentum, <clears throat> excuse me, is already going the wrong way for Trump very, very fast heading into a convention where she's going to get an even bigger bounce. And so, yeah, um, it, it is going to be a very interesting next few weeks heading into the uh, it's like, post convention blitz. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Keith, it's like he's handcuffed himself. Like yeah. the area he can attack Kamala the most, I think, would be her record as a, a, a DA, right? Like right. what she's done, how she's helped. He doesn't even mention mm -mm. his bill, right? The first step back. Because yeah. uh, he thinks that, or at least his the whoever's talking to him or advising to him says it's going to make you look weak on crime. Don't talk about that. That's yeah. something he should tout, and then he should go after Kamala Harris for her record there. But he's staying away from it because of this mentality or this ideology that you got to look tough on crime. I call it immigrant crime. You, you're going that way with no data whatsoever, what you're trying to claim to as well. Once again, he blames everything on immigrants. And what are they going to do? They're going to pick up all the immigrants, have a mass deportation, and, and, right. and we're going to hear a song, Ding Dong, the Witch is Dead. Right. Now every, all the Americans can come out and start picking the fruit <laughs> yeah. and cleaning the pools <laughs> and being yeah. nannies where <laughs> the me. immigrant was doing that job. Now, they get, now they're free to do that. Is it they're going to do that? No. 
No, he's making Ridiculous. the same mistake that Ron DeSantis made, which doomed his campaign, which is he's he's messaging to his already devout hardcore online base. He's going after – like they're, they're releasing sound of her – saying the George Floyd protests aren't going to stop, which is the exact opposite message. The, the, the message that uh, that appeals to the independents and the uh, persuadable moderates, especially black men who are flocking to Donald Trump, is that she locked up black men for marijuana crimes for their child's truancy. Like, that's the direction you should go. But the, you know, end wokeness and fucking, you know, cat turd isn't going to like that messaging. And he'd rather throw red meat to those idiots than actually try to win a campaign. And he's just going one way the wrong way. It, it is it is a completely insane strategy that he has implemented these past few weeks. I've never seen an implosion like this. A month ago, we were talking about his presidency as inevitable. Inevitable. We were just taking it as a fait accompli. Okay, Trump's in office. There's nothing that's going to change. And now it's a nail, nail biter with the odds makers saying Kamala is the favorite because at this rate, on this trajectory, she is the favorite. If the election were held today, it's probably 50-50. The election is not going to be held today. At this rate, given the respective momentums of the campaign, she's on she's on track to win this election, which should be an unlosable election for Donald Trump. It's amazing. Please clap. <laughs>